Hello everyone, Kim here, Abundant Life Tarot. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm super excited for this one because we are going through this gorgeous deck, the Boudicca's Tarot of Earthly Delights by Paula Millet. And the Reader's Companion book, amazing book by the way, is by Caroline Kenner with Paula Millet. And I am super excited about this deck. Let me tell you why. So a number of years ago, I downloaded, I think it was the Fool's Dog app, where it has a, you know, a few choices you can pick from different tarot decks that you can have on your phone as an app. And I chose this one. And so that was my one and only deck that I had that was on my phone as an app. And I kept wishing and hoping that one day the creators of the cards, the 78 cards that are found in the Boudicca's Tarot of Earthly Delights on the app would be actually a deck in hand that I could use. And so after, I guess, much persuasion by the masses, the creators went ahead and did this deck and it was fully funded on Kickstarter. That's how I came to you know, back it and support it. And now it is finally here. And now we are going to switch camera angles in just a moment. And I'm going to flip through all of the cards. I simply just took off the cellophane wrapping and uh, took the wrapping off of the cards, but I haven't gone through all the cards yet. I thumbed through the guidebook. The guidebook is amazing. And another cool thing that was a part of the Kickstarter, which I hope that for future Kickstarter campaigns from other creators that they might consider doing this is that Paula and Caroline, they had, um, I guess, courses. So once it fully funded, they started offering courses and went through all of the cards, discussing the inspiration for the imagery. Um, Caroline who has been a reader for decades, was discussing her card meanings um, associated with the images. And I thought that was amazing. And so we did that on Zoom, like every, I think it was like once or twice a month. I think it was like once a month um, throughout the, the duration of the deck being created. And so I thought that was really wonderful. What a wonderful add-on. Uh, for the Kickstarter was for us who have supported this deck to be able to be online on Zoom to ask questions to the creators and to learn about how they got inspired to create their deck. And it's just an incredible story. Like the app, I don't know, it's been several years. I want to say I downloaded like 2016, 2017, and it was my one and only app. And it was my one and only wish that they would actually make it like so, like today. So without further ado, let's switch camera angles. And what I plan to do in this video is to timestamp the majors in each of the suits so you can easily come back and forth later if you'd like to look through them. You are able for a short period of time, get a copy of this deck because I'm sure there's extras being sold on the creator's site. I'll put a link in the description box down below. Um, but you know, with these things, it, they come and go quickly. And I don't know if they're going to have another print run or not. So I'm recording this as of November 20th, 2023. And so hopefully you're able to get your hands on it. All right. All right. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Okay. So we have the box here. I'll thumb spot, take that off like so. Beautiful violet blue. Love that color. Love it, love it, love it. Now I'm going to share with you first the guidebook. So we have the Reader's Companion. Okay. So we have that. It's full color. And we have some acknowledgments here. On these first couple of pages, you have a table of contents, right? Then you have some in information about the tarot beginnings, like the origin, which is cool. I cannot wait to read the guidebook because I do like to read my guidebooks for my decks that come with them, you know, like just to get a, a better understanding about the creation 
of that deck and just deepen my understanding of like card meanings, for example, or the history or whatever the creator is sharing with us, right? So we have the overview. We have why the garden of earthly delights. Yes, cannot wait to get into that. We then have an introduction to the majors and that's what we're gonna get into here. Uh, before we go through the majors and the cards, let me just show you what's in the guidebook. We have here a description of what's going on in the image, full color image here. We have the interpretation. We have the upright and the reverse meanings. Okay, loving that. We have symbols, important symbols depicted in the deck. There's a little B here. You barely can see it there, but that's one of the symbols. It says the existential question, to be or not to be. The precipice, risk, adventure, a leap of faith, blue sky, optimism, hope, a far horizon beyond the mist, the promise of travels and adventure ahead, the head of an ass, brilliant, represents folly and refers to the episode in Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream with when Oberon, the king of the fairies, transforms the head of bottom the weaver into that of an ass in order to make a fool out of his wife, Queen Titania. The fool's dog. This is again, symbols, right? Familiar animal guide, the vital animal self and a faithful companion for the journey. Oh, I love that. Okay, and then you go on to the magician. Okay. And just while we're at the guidebook portion, what I really appreciate about this deck is we have here the Boudicca the Queen card. There's some bonus cards here, I believe, right? Yes, it says a 78 card deck, but I'm pretty sure there's a bonus card and I'm sure we'll see it. Um, but let's do this. We have the world, right? And then we have Boudicca the Queen. Queen, Boudicca the Queen, right here. Okay. Then we have an introduction to the miners. And the elements, combustion, wands, tentacles is the cups, the ether, swords, fungi, pentacles. Then we've got the numbers. And I do always encourage folks to just have a, you know, get a basic understanding of numero numerology, okay? That's going to help you in your tarot practice. And this guidebook can help with that because we've got through the aces, which is associated with number one, through the tens, just some basics that, you know, go from suit to suit because it's numerology, right? And it can inform you of the card meanings when you have that basic understanding. Um, so yeah, then we have the courts. So we have the court cards. And then full color, two pages devoted to even the minors, which is impressive. Let's look at the court, same thing. It's just gorgeous. This guidebook is everything. I love the way it is broken down. I love that um, they go into the symbols. I think that is quite helpful. Let's see what else is going on in the guidebook. So after the last card, uh, here's, I think, another extra card. The Perspicacious Platypus. <laughs> it's got an infinity symbol associated. We'll see that card when I do the flip through. Reading the card section, so it's labeled Divination. Reading the cards, the Spirit of Inquiry. And there's some suggestions on how to divine with the deck or just any deck, really. Reading tarot, keep a tarot journal, deepening reading skills, consider iconography across the entire deck. I will. I can't wait to check this part out. Journal your compare contrast exercises and reading styles. And this is interesting. I'm also going to be interested in checking that out as well all right so there's some suggested questions here there's one card two card three card spreads okay 
past, present, and future. We have subject, object, and relationship. That's cool. So different ways to work with a three-card spread. Then we have brilliance, shadow, and alchemy. And then want, need, and act. So I really love the different options here for the three-card spread. We have a five-card cross variations. Okay. <laughs> Boudicca's badassery. Loving that. The spirit spread. Modern Celtic cross. Okay, Grand Garden of Earthly Delights, wonderful. Okay, so tons of spreads here. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but tons. Okay, take off the training wheels and go. Moving from beginner to intermediate and, to, and on to tarot expert. Hey, I love that. So I, and look at this, image sources and credits. Look at all of this. There's an appendix here, so you've got that good information that you can refer to as well. Wonderful, complete guidebook that they call the Reader's Companion. And typically, uh, tarot books can be used for different decks. So you find your favorite guidebooks from a deck and put it on your shelf for easy access. And you can, you know, work with this across many tarot decks, okay? All right, that is the Reader's Companion. Get into the cards. So I'm taking this out, but I wanted to show you the back, the inside and back of the box. So here's the inside that houses the cards. My deck came perfectly intact. No bent, like bent spots or bruising or anything, dents, anything on the deck. And it, it's, it was traveling a ways, right? Um, international shipping even. And it made it perfectly fine. And I am, this is a first edition, number 729 of 1000 for this deck. Okay. And look, custom spreads by Sarah Mastros, courtesy of Fool's Dog LLC. So Fool's Dog is the app, like I mentioned earlier, when I first uh, did the introduction to this video. Okay. So let's set that to the side. Let's look at these card backs. I love the card stock. It's like flimsy enough that's going to be easy enough for me to ripple shuffle actually i really like it yes 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 um yeah and it's glossy but I, i'm not mad at it because it's not super thick yes and i will grab a deck so you can see the size This is the Smith Weight US Games Systems Edition. Here, let's do this, yeah. Justice, right? So it is quite a bit bigger, okay? It is quite a bit bigger. But I, for a female, I do have larger sized hands. So I'm not too concerned because I feel like I can be able to riffle shuffle it with the cardstock that we have here. You can kind of see that it's glossy. Some people it might be too large, okay? That might be too large, but because of the artwork, you almost have to have it on a larger card stock. So I could understand why the creator felt that way, okay? Now I'm gonna set these to the side. So here we go. And in comparison to the U.S. game systems, this is 78 cards right here. And then this is the deck here. You can see it's a little bit, a little bit thinner, but I like it. If it's going to be larger, it needs to be, to me, a thinner card stock. So let's look at the card backs up close. It is reversible for those of us who use reversals, which I do. Okay, let's go through the majors first, shall we? So, before we do that, you can see that they are color-coded. The majors in this gorgeous maroon, burgundy kind of color. Um, you have the Ace of Combustion, fire. Those tentacles, water. Um, the air is like that bluish gray color. That olive green for the fungi or earth. 
And then the extra, one of the extra cards we have here, we have like a purple, purple color. All right, here is the Fool. Magician. The High Priestess. The Empress. Hmm, the Emperor. The Hierophant. I love the touch of whimsy and it just, just captures the imagination here. The Lovers. The Chariot. Sorry for the glare. Trying to get it without the glare. One of the downsides to gloss, but sometimes if the car sock is done right and it's with a gloss finish, it can actually really help with the longevity of the deck, especially if you're going to be using it a lot. Strength. Oh, I love this Hermit card. Remember, this is a deck flip through. We have the Wheel of Fortune. As I get to use it more, and as I circle back next year, I'm thinking in 2024, I want to do more deck and focuses where I express how I've been working with the deck and in what, you know, like in what ways, how often I've been working with it and um, what do I find is great about working with it and what are some challenges. So I want to circle back to some of my unboxings and deck flip throughs that I've done, you know. We have Justice. So if you see some videos that you've that you've seen I've done in the past where it was an unboxing or a deck flip through and you want to know more about how I'm working with that deck in to, like the today world, <laughs> modern day, uh, present day, then just leave me a comment and I'll do a where is the deck now or a deck in focus episode. Here's I love the hanged man. Ah, death. Temperance. The devil. Ah, oh, the Eiffel Tower, the tower. <laughs> The star. The moon. Have a little cheeky moon. Here is the sun. Here is judgment. He almost looks like the guy in the hermit. The world. Okay. Boudicca, the queen. Okay, okay. So now what we're going to do is pause here and we're going to go into the next, into the suits. I'll be right back. All right. So now we are in the suit of combustion, also known as the wands or the element of fire. So we have ace of combustion, two of combustion, it's beautiful. Huh, interesting. Three of combustion, four. in my hands. Finally a glossy deck that just has a little give to it. Look at that. Seven of combustion. 
eight. Huh. Ah, nine of combustion. Traditionally nine of wands or nine of fire. Love it. Here is ten of combustion. Page. Night. Queen. And King. Now we are making our way to the tentacles, which is the water element and the suit of cups. Traditionally, Ace of Tentacles. Two. Two of Tentacles. Three. Four, five, six. I have a funny story about this particular card. So a few months back, our Rottweiler had run off, just ran off, and my daughter was just beside herself. She was so upset. And I said, do you want me to pull a card to see if the pup, you know, the dog is gonna come back, if Osa's coming back? And she was like, with you know, tears in her eyes, she was like, yes. And my daughter is, she's not, she knows this is a part of my thing, that I'm a tarot reader, all of that, but she's not always into it. But that night she was into it. And on the app, this card came up when I asked, you know, what's the energies of what's coming up with Osita? Or we, her name is Osa, but we call her Osita. And this talk, this card came up, and I said, "You should be very happy, my dear. There will be a reunion shortly, okay, with you and your doggy." And sure enough, about mm, about two o'clock in the morning, I got up to give me some water and something. My intuition told me go peek out the window. And off in the far corner of our yard was Osita. <laughs> she didn't want to come in even that night, but yeah, we got her back. So this card is near and dear to me because of that. <laughs> seven of Tentacles. I love this Seven of Cups. Seven of Tentacles. Yes, indeed. I even love the look on her face. She's kind of like, oh, decisions, decisions. Eight. Nine. Ten. Page. Night. Hmm. Queen of Tentacles and King of Tentacles. This is like a whole vibe, a whole experience, a whole historical lesson, um, and uh, just a journey into the whimsy. You know, that's what I love about this deck and the feel of it. Like, there's just layers upon layers with the images and. I'm grateful the guidebook goes into the symbolism and just it's just it's, in the end we have the courses that those of us who back the deck we can now refer back to those courses with the creators and you know really like deep dive into the cards even more it's just an amazing Kickstarter experience with this deck so now we have the Aether suit or 
swords or air, right? So we have the ace. Hmm, I love this two of swords or two of aether. Two of aether. The blindfold, that's the traditional right away smith element here. Huh. Yes. Okay. Here's the three. And um, let me see. Let's just take a quick look at the guidebook on that. The three. I want to look at that for a moment. I turn, here we go, right to it. So just at the top here, we have some keywords. Can you see those? Aether, air, swords, intellect, ideas, logic, wit discourse okay and that goes across on the second page interpretation broken hearts and dashed dreams are deeply painful but not insurmountable upright it's heartbreak disillusion discord pointless arguments that go around and around without resolution and what I also love is that the guidebook goes into what we're looking at here in the image Three beetles tear apart an airborne heart fashioned from a lovely rose bouquet. As the beetles tear at the blossoms, they sully its beauty and ruin its symmetry. <laughs> Despite this trauma, the heart emits illuminated rays against the dawn sky. All is not lost. Help is on the way. A flock of swallows hungry for tasty bugs are flying in from the south. You see those down here. And then we have the interpretation of the upright meaning. Taking apart a heart full of roses is risky. Will they fit back together again once the insects have been removed? However, taking apart the heart may be the only way to get rid of the bugs. Kindness, love, and beauty inevitably attracts predators. Discernment and strength of character are our best tools to avoid becoming prey. Reversed. The beginning of the end of heartbreak. Bravery, or I said bravery. Hmm. Brave heart now. Roses deserve better than to become a feast for predators. It's time to let go and move on. No satisfactory resolution is available here. Time to leave intractable problems behind. Sometimes we need to take our hearts and fly away if we really need to get rid of the bugs. Your heart is made of roses. Trust that there will be a brighter tomorrow. Symbols, rose heart is hopes and dreams, love, happiness. The beetles represent destruction, frustration, sorrow, and woe. Illuminated rays, the power to heal that comes from within. And swallows, hope, rescue is on its way. Love that. I just wanted to take a quick gander at the guidebook so you can get a feel for it. Okay, so now we have four of air. Five of ether. Six, love a six of air, look at that. Okay, we have seven, seven of ether. All right, eight, love this eight of air. Nine. Ten. Page. Knight. Knight of Aether. Here's the Queen. And the King. Okay. There we go. All right, so. Now we are at the suit of fungi, and that is also the element of earth, the suit of pentacles or coins. We have the ace, two, love 
that. I love this card a lot, actually. Love that. It's beautiful. Three. Four. Yes, yes, yes. Can't wait to go into a deep dive of these cards. Five. Fungi. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. The opulence of the, it all. This, this woman, she has it all. Or does she? She's almost there. And ten. Night. Queen. And the king. Okay. Now, we have this bonus card. A perspicacious platypus. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce that. I'm probably butchering that first word there, but let's see. Let's go to the guidebook and see if we can get some further explanation on this card. And we have several um, symbols here depicted. Platypus, an amphibious marsupial found in Australia and New Zealand. Okay. Perse <laughs> perspicacity, possessing acute mental awareness and discernment, duck and beaver portraits, those are over there, let me see them. When first encountered by Europeans, the platypus was thought to be a taxidermy assemblage of a beaver and a duck. That's interesting. Golden mirror, a portal framed in love and glory. Perspective number one, let your self-examination be tempered with love and acceptance. Wallpaper of the stars, okay. It's an infinite universe out there. Other perspective number one, cultivate humility while you are regarding yourself. Look to the temperance card to find balance. The all-seeing eye, which is here, right? is looking through you just as you are looking through it venus goddess of love and beauty the garden your inner eden rainbow ray love is love pamela coleman smith aka pixie do i see her oh there she is she's in one of the portraits there she is the genius artist who created the interpretive Im imagery for the Rider Waite Smith Tarot deck, first published in 1909. And, and I won't read all of this, I'll just read a couple of like sentences here. For example, for the upright interpretation, it says this platypus representing the reader or querent has achieved a very personal enlightenment, perhaps through study of Tarot, perhaps through life experience. They have learned to know themselves and love themselves as they are, as they have been and as they will be. They have come to accept themselves for both their inner shadows and their inner light. This understanding brings joy and peace. Self-acceptance allows them to accept others with forgiveness and affection. We are multifaceted, imperfect, inspiring, exasperating, lovable, all to mortal beings, aren't we? <laughs> yes, we are. Reverse. Now that the platypus is upended, finding themselves in a not 
dissimilar predicament as the hanged man, experiencing an inner existential crisis. The platypus is working through where to quote unquote go with themselves, what to embrace and what to leave behind. Instead of knowing and loving themselves, they are still looking to others for guidance as they weigh their sense of self. And I'll stop there. There's more, but I don't want to be a total spoiler. <laughs> so I'll stop there. But that is a gorgeous card and a gorgeous addition to this tarot deck. Oh my goodness. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in just a tad because I want to see how it shuffles overhand. Yes, it is a it is bigger, right? Or tentacles, but I'm gonna see if I can riffle shuffle it. It's not because they have some good slip to it. It's not difficult. To overhand shuffle they riffle shuffle like a dream with my decks I try to separate them in sections instead of shuffling all of them at the same time if I you know remember most times I do remember because I want to you know protect the deck as much as possible overhand it shuffles nicely okay got Jumper there. Just seeing again. I really, really like this deck. As you all probably could tell, I'm quite smitten with it. I'm so happy it's here finally. Ah, it is just gorgeous. Look at the way the backs fan like that. Yeah, I suppose you could riffle shuffle all of them. I'm scared. I just prefer not to. I just prefer not to. But it is just, oh, the guidebook is delicious. The imagery is gorgeous. The just, you know, the overall vibe and energy of the deck is just inspirational. Look at that. We got the sun and strength. Remember them? Page. Four of Tentacles, Page of Ether. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. That is the Boudicca Tarot of Earthly Delights. I am so excited to have this in my collection. I am curious to hear your thoughts about this deck. Please leave a comment and share what you think. Um, have you heard of this deck? Do you have it? Is it on its way to you? you know now that you've seen it maybe you've heard about it and now you've seen a full flip through are you considering getting it what are some of your favorite cards i'd love to hear from you in the comment section down below please on your way out do me a favor please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel we're going to have more videos coming your way because i've got more decks coming in and it is almost that time of year where i like to celebrate the decks and you know just talk about the decks that came into my collection as well as my top decks for that year all of that good fun stuff i like to do year over year here on the channel so if you want to you know watch those videos stay in connection and fellowship with fellow car readers like myself subscribe all right, friends, take very good care of yourselves. Much love. So many blessings to all of you. Bye for now.